Hi guys, it's me, Fisher Rob, once again for the Novice Angler. What are we doing today? Well, I've had some inquiries from a buddy of mine I went fishing with about a um, particular type of feeder that he had in his tackle box and he wanted to know a bit more about. So uh, I went hunting and found a little selection of feeders in my own tackle box and a, a couple of ones I'll pop down to the shops. There's loads of different types of feeders out there. Um, you may recall I've done a video on the method feeders um, and uh, that cracking one by Guru. Well, they're just the same with the normal, um, I would call it an open-ended mesh feeder. Um, they do a cracking range of those, but we'll get to those in just a minute. Let's try and give you an idea of some of the feeders that are out there. First of all, there's this one. This is a Dinsmore feeder. It's plastic, it's cylindrical, has its weight on the back, has a simple fitting to the line, which you can put uh, a stud on at one side so it doesn't drop down towards the hook link, um, or it's free to slide up the line above the hook link, uh, which is the better idea with these, um, so that again, in the event of any line breaks and things, the fish isn't carrying around three grams of weight, um, which can snag somewhere and end up the fish starving. So uh, always try and keep your feeders or method feeders um, in a free running state. Um, add to that or on a boom, a boom which is free running as well. Uh, by that, I simply mean something similar to Angler's Corner's own type of method feeder or mesh feeder. Um, these are a very, very good little feeder, very, very competitively priced down there. I think they're about 199 250 something like that. Um, it comes complete with its own little swivel on the top. Um, and that is quite simply so you can connect that on and it'll act like a pendulum on your line. You pop your ground bait in there um, at the bottom end, maybe put some castor maggot, maybe some hemp, uh, and then pop a bit more ground bait on the top so it's nice and firmly squished in there and then off you go and cast it out. Now the unique thing about the Angler's Corners ones is they have these little fins on. I don't know if you can see that. Um, but these little fins give it a very nice flight through the air and also it keeps it stable as it goes down through the water. Now that will effectively activate the flow of the water through the feeder and will slowly sink out as you sink your mesh feeder through the water. So it creates a lovely little sort of fountain of food coming down through the water over your hook bank hook bait, which is lower down actually on the line. Secondly, of course, this is another good idea with the mesh is for pellets. Um, I've used things like ground bait at the bottom, some pellets in the center and ground bait at the top. And I do that purposely so that when the um, uh, pellets start to expand, they actually push the feed out from the feeder on the bottom of the river or lakeside. So um, you can use these open-ended mesh feeders to some very, very good results. So well done Angler's Corner for that. Um, but uh, the one that uh, my buddy has, Rich, um, has a end cap type of method feeder. He's got it in the sort of clear design. Um, but you can literally just pull the top off Fill a lot of ground bait down the bottom, casters again, maggot, things like that. And then you can just slide this back over the top and then it clips it back in place. And there's your little food parcel ready to go. Now, a little tip I'll give you guys out there is that quite often, if this is filled, say, with a little bit of ground bait each end and maggot in the center, um, or similar thing with that, or even paste, you can use a lot of nice paste baits, you can make those up yourself. Um, and uh, put your own little additives in as well. Um, one of the little tips I'll give you with this, before you put the top back on, add a little bit of scent to it. When the lid's off, etc., you've got your ground bait, you've got your maggot, you've got your top bait, etc., your other ground bait squished at the top. Don't compress it too hard either, because it will take ages to come out. Um, but uh, just generally fill it well. And then pop yourself some flavouring. Um, I don't know what you might go for. Um, a lot of the fruity scents go really well with carp. Um, something like barbel and chub, probably more pineapples and things like that. So um, quite a lot. Banoffee. Banoffee is another good one for carp. Um, but uh, get yourself some of the cool de goo, a few drops on that, and then send that out, and you'll have a lovely scented uh, parcel of food ready to go. But the other tip I'll give you is with regards to the holes. If you find that um, 
when this goes out and it sits on the bottom of the river or lakeside it's going to take oh i don't know nine ten minutes to fully probably uh, get rid of all its bait the maggots crawling out and things like that water flow over the top dragging the rest out if you want to create something that is appealing to fish in all levels um, then first of all see what fish you catch first of all um, and if you find they're actually hooked in the bottom lip chances are they were coming down on top of your bait picking it up coming up more or less level from the uh, riverbed again say and then that starts the hook and nine times out of ten they're hooked in the bottom lip so you know that if you want to pull them down from the surface because that seems to be where they're feeding and they've come down to your bait then drill these holes out or have a couple of these already purchased and one or two modified to larger diameter holes and then from that you can find that as that goes down through the water it's going to dissipate quicker the maggots etc that are there will be getting out a lot quicker the um, hemp seeds will flow out quicker with the water flow through this as it drops down through the water everything will be accelerated by the change of gauge of these holes and that you'll find then will create a complete fountain of food going down through the water um, and again if you find that the carp are fishing at different levels and you're hooking them in the bottom lip that will bring them down to your bait a lot quicker and increase the chance of catching in your particular swim so think about the little hole sizes as well have one or two already drilled out in your tackle box uh, ready to adapt depending on what you're finding on the day now moving forward again i've got to come back to guru i love guru products i love calder products um, and again guru do not uh, let you down with regards to the mesh feeder and i'll tell you why first of all the whole range of the mesh feeders come in a whole range of sizes so you can have larger weights down with little i don't know two three ounce uh, weights on the back you can have smaller weights um, you can have smaller mesh with larger weights it's all interchangeable absolute fabric they do a whole range of uh, different grades of mesh and different sizes of weights so do have a look at the guru system secondly the types of method feed uh, method feeder um, mesh feeder that they do has different stems now the central stem here this one is geared with a uh, swivel in the top and can be a pendulum feeder let me just change that over this is how simple it is you just push out the center slide out the inner stem and there she's empty put the new one through push that inside and there you have your pendulum feeder um, very very simple arrangement and uh, very easy to interchange you can swap that out pop the other one back in press it into place and it's nicely locked in or oh, well if i turned it correctly lock it into place and there you have an inline feeder so the line goes straight the way through to your swivel at the bottom and your hook link beyond and it's free to slide up and down the line so cracking idea to start with with that whole range of weights whole range of sizes very very good idea but the unique thing about the guru feeders is the weight at the back first of all it's chamfered now by that it just basically means it's slightly heavier at one end than the other and i think it's at the base um, than the upper part of the stem secondly if you can see here it actually goes around the side of the mesh here and across the back and the other side so by having that shape um, the whole idea that it's got some like little teeth at the bottom as well it's very very positive when it's on the river side or fast flowing river uh, or lake um, area it's going to hold very very well on silty base stony base weedy base whatever it's going to sit nicely like that and because of this chamfered shape as well on the side um, and the fact that, that it's weighted a little more at one end than the other when you have to reel this back in she'll come up and skip across the top of the water back to you on the riverbank or lakeside um, absolutely fine um, you're not going to have any grief with hang-ups or it dragging along the bottom and then eventually coming up when the lines get particularly short uh, and it'll start coming up to the surface this immediately starts to respond to how you're reeling in and will pop up onto the surface and scoop back to you nice and quickly so i've known some people to use these wonderful guru uh, systems to actually feed the swim initially they don't put the hook link on 
they simply just pack this full of a nice ground bait with some hemp and caster as I say and uh, cast that out um, it hits the lock on your reel the line lock and drops into the water and it drops down through the bottom and it's always breaking out and breaking out and breaking out so um, you can do that two or three times and you effectively feed your swim uh, so uh, could use that very easy in a sort of form of spotting really um, and then actually bother with actually putting the hook link on at the bottom end and fishing proper directly on the same spot so again you know nicely weighted well shaped fits to the mesh the mesh is positive it's strong but it is still a little bit flexible so uh, you're not going to have anything breaking on you or anything like that interchangeable stems in the center I mean, they've really gone to town with this one, so uh, I can't fault it. Um, so you have your open-ended feeder, um, paste you could use, you could use maggot, caster as I say, the closed end or end block feeders, again think about the hole gauges, um, for fast flowing rivers it would empty quicker, so you use the narrower holes. If you want food to come out a bit quicker or to create that nice shower through the ground, uh, sorry, through the ground, through the water as uh, you cast it out, um, then uh, yeah, use the ones that have got slightly larger holes and you'll get a quicker delivery of your bait. Um, the fabulous one from uh, Angler's Corner over at Schlenetli with the guiding fins for a positive and steady controlled descent of the mesh feeder and interchangeable weights at the back very very nice idea and as I say I've got to keep coming back to the master guru what a cracking system for mesh feeding so hopefully rich that answers your question and uh, with other viewers to my channel that gives you a few ideas about a different form of method feeding thanks for watching